Hey, I'm working on this 24 by 30 acrylic portrait again, just showing you how to paint foliage, how to paint trees in your acrylic portrait. On my palette right now, I have some raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, raw sienna, and I am basically putting down some shadow colors and trying to render these shapes here that you see on the reference photo. And so when you're painting foliage, you want to uh, make sure that you use the right color. That's that's very, very important, the right color. Um, so you, in your shadows, you don't want to be using something too chromatically intense. I'm not really using green. I mean, it is green, but it's it's a very grayish green. It's, it's not very saturated in color. And so this is the right color to use, um, more of a greenish gray to really get the shadows rendered here. And that's going to um, increase the realism. It's also going to help the people to stand out more. This is a portrait where my uh, skills are being put to the test. I mean, I've never done a portrait with that many people in it. 30 people and one portrait. Um, but this is uh, something God has called me to do and I'm enjoying it. So I just want to share with you some of these techniques. And again, I'm just uh, blocking in a few glazes and um, I'm going to thin this down. So you, if you're new to the glazing technique, we take some clear acrylic medium and I use matte medium here and it's um, crystal clear, um, but it is, it is crystal clear when it's dry, but it's a little bit kind of milky white when it's wet. And when you mix it with the paint, it allows you to paint translucently. And you can see right here how you can see right through it. See that? And so it really allows you, I'm just gonna wipe that off, but it allows you to build up um, shading over time with these layers and really preserve the detail of your sketch. And you can see the pencil sketch still shining through but eventually that'll all be covered up. But because I have, uh, because I'm using this glazing technique, I'm able to preserve the likenesses of the people and not lose the likenesses within the sketch as I'm painting. So that's important to really preserve the likeness of the people you're painting. Um, I shared this in my critique group in the Realistic Acrylic Portrait School All Access membership, where we meet on a regular basis and do live critiques of our work and grow in our skills. But I mentioned to the artists that um, when you're painting a portrait on commission, the client is gonna care more about the likeness than how realistic it looks. You could paint a realistic portrait of somebody, um, but the client won't care if it doesn't look like their loved one. So, so important to be able to capture the likeness. And again, the glazing technique allows you to do that. Now, back to what we're doing here, working on the foliage. Again, I'm just chiseling in using this size 14 angled flat brush. And I'm right now rendering this area here. All right, so you can see that this area right there, that's what I'm working on. I'm not even putting in any branches yet. I'm not gonna be concerned about that yet. But um, now I wanna darken this side of the tree right here. All right, so you can see how it's substantially darker. And as it gets darker, the colors get cooler. This is almost just black. So again, this is a good color to use, this kind of dark grayish green. It's in blue. And again, ultramarine blue is a great color to use for that. Uh, ultramarine blue, raw sienna, and Indian yellow work great for dark shadow colors for your foliage. Now, that would be your first step is getting the color right, but then... Secondly, you want to get the shapes right. So you really need to look at your reference photo and see what are the shapes that I'm noticing. You know, when you look at this entire outline here, for example, let's just zoom in here a little more. What is this shape? I'm sorry for the reflection of my lights. What's this shape right here? So you look at that shape and you try to render the outline of that certain shape. And instead of trying to think I'm painting individual leaves, instead render these shapes 
and put that dark value. You see that dark value that kind of comprises this whole thing and how that color here kind of matches that? That's what you're going to use and put that in. Now, I do have many layers. I built this up with, I don't know, maybe five to ten layers prior to doing this. So that allows me then to really um, get a rich depth here and get a little bit bolder with this color. I'm just going to move this down a little bit so that the lights don't shine on it. And we'll just um, put in these dark colors. Now let's go and grab a little bit more ultramarine blue and raw umber dark. Mix that together with just a bit of Indian yellow. And like I said, some raw sienna. And that's the color we want right here. This is the color we want for these dark shadows. Now we can darken this area over here and I'm going to just show you what I'm painting. So this is that shape we're trying to create right there. And that shape right there. Now I already did half the work in the sketch. The heavy lifting was done in the sketch. And now in this painting process, I just need to basically uh, go over what I've already done. And that's all there is to it. So it's as simple as that and complex as that. So I'm blocking in these forms. Now I'm trying to be careful not to fill everything in indiscriminately because there's a few lighter areas inside that I'm trying to capture. And reductively, I just kind of leave those areas open. But we use a firm amount of pressure in the brushwork and then we smooth it out. And we'll darken this area here as well. This whole section here can get darker and that's corresponding to this area here above these people, as you can see. Lots of little nuances inside though, but uh, we, can always, we can always capture those later if we need to. If you paint over the lines, paint over the people a little bit, not a big deal because we're gonna be going over them again and really rendering those forms. All right, so we just block this in. All right, so we're just chiseling it in, trying to keep the integrity of these shapes. That's important. Now here I'm going to cut in a darker shape that corresponds to this part right here. And I'm going to cut it in right there and just fill in that little section. Hey, if you like this video so far, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And also check out my free tutorials at realisticacrylic.com. Free tutorials, classes, lessons, realisticacrylic.com. Step-by-step lessons covering everything you need to know to paint a realistic acrylic portrait advice on how to price your artwork, um, three steps to avoid in making your paintings look amateurish. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can check out there. Um, I think, I think the, the article I have is actually three common mistakes that artists make on their portraits. You can check all that out. And like I said, free classes and lessons at realisticacrylic.com. And that'll help you to become a better portrait artist. That's my goal here, to help you paint a portrait you can be proud of. Let's fill in this area right here. That's an important part too. Just like that. So we're just, again, blocking in these areas and uh, really creating a nice sense of depth. Let's just zoom in here, and I need to make sure I get this area darker down here. We'll reload the brush, flip it over, scoop a nice amount of paint on there, and we'll just kind of cut in around the edge of this woman here and this guy's hand, and then we smooth it out. And we break up some of the forms here because the leaves obviously have some areas where they're open and closed. And then we'll uh, add a couple little spots to the top here. Let's 
fill in this area a little bit larger. Okay, and then I want to go to the top here and just bring in some of the shading up a little bit higher. Just a little bit higher on the top. Yeah, because I can see that we need to get some of this harshness broken up. And see these little patterns I'm making to break that up and to suggest the volume of the leaves sticking out. So as you look back, you can see it starting to take shape little by little. And so again, just want to show you part of this process here. I hope you found it helpful. Again, go to realisticacrylic.com and I have many more resources there to help you in your portrait painting journey. But for now, thank you so much for watching. And I'll continue to share more of this process with you. God bless and we'll talk to you soon.